In other Web2 is on fire news and leading into, you know, Web3 as the solution news it involves creators making money. So Patreon is the creator platform that is probably most well known from the Web2 era. It really kind of you know, in the way that like Kickstarter is the one that you talk to about crowdfunding, even though there are several others. Patreon is the one that you talk about for funding creators, even though there are others. It's kind of like the Kleenex or something mm -hmm. of the crowdfunding for creators. And they have had repeated issues, right? I think that the founder of Patreon came to it with the best of intentions. He is an artist himself and really wanted to do right by creators. And I think that it's really just the limitations of the technology itself that has caused his platform and the nuances, you know, and the, the, the liability of having a centralized platform that he has had to contend with on the legal side that have also caused a lot of trouble for his platform. In this case, it seems to be about the infrastructure itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'll just read a little section of this tweet thread here because this is what called my attention to it. Uh, it says, Patreon system appears to have totally collapsed. They sent me an email saying my credit card blocked the payment as fraudulent and canceled all of my creator support. And this is where it gets really dire because when he goes, he, he's like so invested in trying to support the creators that he values that he went looking for his supported list of creators and that list is gone. So now he's just having to try to remember who they are. Oh and man. Then he he does. He remembers he remembers some of who some of them are, right? And he goes to go and click to support them, the, the support this creator button, and he gets a 404 error. Like what is happening, Patreon? Wow. What is happening? You know, here's a, an article about it. Why did I suddenly lose 300 patrons Oof. from a, from the creator side? So now you're going to think about that from the creator side, right? Like it's frustrating enough it's from the so supporter side rebuild. because you're just trying to, you know, kind of like support things that you believe in, support mm -hmm. artists. Like that's so important. That's mm -hmm. the 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 Patreon name comes from you know the patron mm -hmm. patrons supporting art artists mm -hmm. forever, mm -hmm. right? Okay, let's now think about it from the creator side, which is really what has my heart in this Ouch. because the the thing that most people don't realize is that creators are in the way that web2 works, there there there's a really strong analogy with sharecropping. They don't own anything about what they're doing other than the immediate content that they're putting out and the immediate funds that they're receiving. They don't right. own their their connection to their audience they don't own the land on which they're broadcasting their content Even that lift they don't of the cre of their audience itself right Oy. yeah exactly and cuz they can't do anything to protect it like this might be a technical issue on patreon's fault that it's lost forever and they could have protected their own list if they Right. If they have so the, the, so the to. one way that the, that people will argue back on this is that they'll say, well, creators can build an email list, and, and you'll hear that from people who are coaching creators yeah, is that true. it's really important for them to build their email list first and foremost because email is a protocol, and you can't have a third party intermediary stop a protocol. There's a whole other conversation we can have about the oligopoly that email has become because yeah. of things like spam and the ways that that has then been solved. It's very, very sad. I talked yeah. about it on a recent podcast. Nonetheless, the most direct control creators can have at this moment in time is to have an email list. So if they did, they could potentially email all of their patrons and say, hey, something went wrong. Please, you know, re-sign re up. But again, that, that kind of friction, right, is like you're definitely going to have some people fall off. Right. Right? right. Absolutely. Right. Okay. If you even were able to get all of your patrons to give you their email in which, the first place. In the first place, you probably, yeah. right. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay, so Patreon, in response to what sounds like a really very quite serious problem, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Your, your platform's on fire kind of problem. <laughs> their answer is, we are aware of an issue regarding a slight, slight increase, increase of decline payments. <laughs> oh, man. We're actively investigating the situation and appreciate your patience while it's resolved. Oh. 
right? Patience, please. So then there's some comments down underneath this tweet. And somebody says, you should refund the cut that you're taking this month. You're right. harming people, right? Yep. And your, yep. your, your creators are going to lose ongoing revenue past this month, why not give them a little extra bonus? You know, yeah. what, what, what is it What is it that they're taking? 10%, 30%, probably something in that range. The response from Patreon support, we sincerely understand your frustration and we greatly appreciate your patience and understanding in this matter. <laughs> what I understanding? I don't have any understanding. I felt like I was listening to one of those like outgoing recordings on a phone, you know, like um, <laughs> your yeah. time is valuable to us. <laughs> no, We're currently it's not. experiencing a higher than anticipated call volume. Thank you for your patience. Like it's so much bullshit, oh, right? Man. And, wow. you know, or like, um, like thoughts and prayers, right? right? Like these people, the creators that depend on this revenue to have lunch and pay their rent are not going to be able to do those things with Patreon's sincere understanding of their frustration right. and their under and their appreciation for your patience, right? Just like you can't protect yourself with thoughts and prayers, you actually need to take personal responsibility for mm -hmm. your protection. Mm -hmm. And so that really leads me kind of into the Web3 solutions because what Web3 offers is personal sovereignty. It, it allows you to take personal control over the ownership of your content, over the distribution of your content, to have a direct relationship with the people who are supporting you, mm -hmm. and to not have those intermediaries who can messed stuff up for you. And before I get to an example of that, I just want to highlight one other thing from, again, Mr. Musk and the Platform X, because they are sort of attempting to solve this problem of creators getting paid as well. Right? He said early on when he took over that they wouldn't take a cut of any of the subscription revenue for the first year, really just as a way to onboard people into the ecosystem to make it attractive. But then he realized that for a lot of people, this money matters a whole lot in their lives, even if it's just a few hundred dollars, and that even taking 10% of that would hurt people unnecessarily. To hit, it, it was not enough money for him for the harm that it was causing to other people. And so he's now adjusted the policy so that even after the first 12 months where he won't be taking any revenue, they will only take 10% from creators once the payout exceeds a hundred thousand dollars that's awesome which is cool right yeah. yeah and he even goes so far as to say that he's going to try to <laughs> speak with tim cook at apple to get them to adjust their policies because they are just absolutely notorious for having strict enforcement of the 30 percent cut that they require so all cool like wow. i think that you know just personally that the kinds of things that elon is saying are pro creator our pro freedom of speech online are you know headed in the direction that we all want to be headed yeah. the unfortunate part is that he continues to use web 2 technology to depend on that and to uh talk smack about web 3 yeah i was gonna say it's really <laughs> funny that the guy who is most kind of antagonistic publicly about web 3 obviously embraces its ideals pretty or seems to, you know, again, he still could be the world's biggest supervillain as far as, you know, we're, we're yet to find out. But so far, he sure seems to really echo all of its Right, ideals. the ethos. Like, mm -hmm. so many of us are in Web3 because of the ethos mm -hmm. of, you know, freedom, of personal responsibility. Right. And he seems to be indicating that he agrees with those things. Yeah. And yet, he has yet to come around to supporting Web3. But well, he, he supports Dogecoin. Don't so. get me started. <laughs> I'm sorry, doggy coin. <laughs> or is it Dogecoin? Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, the Web3 technology that I want to note here is that what, what Elon is highlighting by dictating the terms by which creators will be paid is that the power still lies only on one side of the equation. It still only lies with the platform provider, whether right, that's that Patreon that has right. some serious issues with the their 
tech stack that's serving up you know, their platform, or whether it's with Twitter that is really working hard to fix the problems that they've had on their platform and to offer a, what they see as a fair deal to creators, mm -hmm. they're still fully in charge, right? They're still essentially the landowner in the sharecropping analogy. Mm -hmm. And what's important now is with Web3, that Web3 offers is to distribute that power to both sides and to have a market between the creators and the platforms that are distributing them. And so the universal data license that was just introduced for Arweave is here, I'll just read a quick snippet from it. The universal data license is a standard framework for digital content monetization on the permaweb. It allows creators to set their own terms for the usage of content that they upload to Arweave and for developers to permissionly license data in their apps. So what that means is that creators, when they publish content to the permaweb, they can set distribution terms along with that content. And this is where it gets so exciting because right now as creators, we face a lot of issues in terms of uh, uh, trade-offs, right? We can maybe use a song that we really want that like makes the piece that we're making so much better. It's just the perfect music for it. but. We don't know what kind of terms go along with that when we upload it to YouTube. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be something that they recognize? Are we going to have a, a copyright strike for it? Are, is our, our thing going to be taken down for it? Are they going to just automatically take all of our ad revenue, direct it to somebody else? There, are, It's just this like kind of like wild card mm -hmm. that creators have to uh, make a judgment call about what's important to them at the time. Is it more important to them to make money? Is it more important to them to have the piece just right? Is it are they willing to risk a potential strike to their account in order to take to mm -hmm. try it out? Mm -hmm. And the universal data license, these types of Web3 offerings mean that creators can explicitly say how you can use their content. So it's not just I'll give the platform a 10% cut for distributing on my, my behalf, but it's also things like you can sample my content so mm -hmm. long as I get X percentage. Mm -hmm. You can use it in this way. Here's some footage that I'm not using in that I shot. Here, you know, you use it. Like there's just, it's so exciting when it comes to being a creator that, that my favorite part about being a creator is collaborating yeah. with others. And this actually gives a path to easy. do it. Yeah, yeah it makes yeah. it frictionless. It makes it so that we can do it in a way that has integrity. And that's been the part that's kind of like turned my stomach the entire time that we've been in this web two era of just feeling confused about how to give proper attribution, yep. how to collaborate, not steal, make money, Right. Uh, artists artists want to support other artists, actually. Right. And I, I, I especially like that just because of the nature of the technology, the 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 aspects of that license can be attached to the piece of content. They call it atomically. And I love that. Um it that that's been part of the dream, you know. Right. I mean we've been talking about these about ideas this. for almost yeah. ten years now mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. how this would happen. And here it is, you know. Live. Live, actually happening. Yeah. Yes, love it. So exciting. Absolutely Go check awesome. it out. Publish yeah. something, set terms, because the more that's out there, the more that we can all do and work together. Yep. It'd be really yep. cool.